Okay, hello everyone and welcome back. We are in week two, so this is my second week of sending something out and um, the, I had a question from a parent about helping with um, one of her children uh, blaming, doing a lot of blaming, blaming other people, blaming other kids, blaming other um, things that are happening or things that have happened or circumstances or whatever the case may be. So um, today is going to be looking at blame shifting where, where children and students will shift the blame from themselves onto something else or someone else. And uh, that there are reasons for that and it does definitely start to happen uh, in, a, in an early age group. But if it's not picked up by parents and teachers, then it will continue on and it gets worse and it gets harder to break that habit. So uh, today we're going to go through blame shifting and how we can move away from having blame shifter children into uh, kids that take more personal responsibility. So the growth mindset side of this is going to be the personal responsibility, getting them to, to acknowledge their actions and, um, and be okay with the fact that it's all right to make a mistake or to get something wrong or, um, you know, that, that it's just not going to be perfect every time. And there's a way to deal with that and to, um, to, to deal with that and to deal with it in a more constructive way. So we get to be the, uh, the ship that harnesses all of that and we get to direct the, stu the student or the child in the, in the way that we want them to. So um, we can help them change from being blamers to, uh, to, be, to taking more personal responsibility and being more solution focused. So let's have a look at that now. I can't remember last week if I moved my head out of the screen. It's not really my thing to like having my head there so I think I'll get rid of it <laughs> and we'll go into presentation mode that way you can't see my face all right so blame shifting so we're gonna look at four steps to stop your child blaming <clears throat> child or student I'm going to use the word child most of the time because teachers will still call them their children um, I know I definitely used to call them my children so I'm going to just use the child the word child and that encompasses every parent, grandparent, carer, teacher, uh, whatever the case may be. So four steps to stop your child blaming. Uh, just having a look at kind of where it comes from, the theory, I guess, behind it. When I say theory, I, you know, I'm not going through massive amounts of books and I'm not going to bore you with stuff. I'm talking about um, just kind of to get an understanding of what's going on. Okay, so... Um, have you ever had anything like this happen to you? Your child is, or child or student is building some blocks. They're teetering. It's teetering on the edge and finally the weight becomes too much and boom, they topple down to the ground. And your darling child turns to the next closest person, oh, persona, <laughs> person and yells, look what you did. You made it fall down. Or how about these ones? Johnny did it or whoever else did it. I didn't do it, she gave it to me, or she was here too. Um, as they get older, you'll start to hear things like, why do you hate me so much? Leave me alone, and all these sorts of things. Or uh, it wasn't my fault, I can't help it. All these things where what they're doing is they're moving the blame away from themselves. In the first couple, they're, they're blaming other people, Johnny and Kathy. Uh, then the, the next one down, they start, to, they start to turn on you, they'll blame you. Um, or they'll blame, uh, uh, it doesn't need to be a person. It could be an object or a circumstance. You know, it wasn't my fault. The wind was blowing too hard or, um, I can't help it. I don't know how to hold my pencil the right way or whatever the case may be. So they'll blame that doesn't have to be a person. It can be an, uh, an object as well or a circumstance. Okay. So this is, uh, could be called, could be known as passing the buck or playing the blame game and not taking responsibility. So these are all the same things. And basically that means that they're moving their responsibility over to someone or something else. And we call that blame shifting. So in Wiki, Wikipedia, it, um, it describes it as the act of attributing to another person or group 
one's own responsibility. So rather than taking responsibility for, um, you know, building the blocks in a fashion that wasn't solid and they fell down, you would attribute it to something else. That person walked past me, um, you know, the wind blew it down. So something or someone else. Okay, so why does this matter? Basically, kids don't want to disappoint us. They want to keep us happy. They want our attention. And what happens is they think that if, um, you know, if they make a mistake or they do something wrong, then um, we, won't, we won't approve of it, you know, and they're going to disappoint us. So uh, they want to make sure that they're doing things that we approve of and um, it's you know, it makes sense. We need to understand where they're coming from. But over time, doing this, blaming other things rather than taking responsibility, it can become the norm. And when that happens, it creates kids that, that don't take responsibility for their actions. And you'll start seeing as they grow older, they're the victim of all these circumstances. And they end up, um, you know, as when they're younger, you'll end up in endless negotiation with a, a whiny child. So, I don't want to do that. He did that. She did that. Why do I have to do it when they don't have to do it? And you end up negotiating uh, to get them to do what, what you want them to. And then as they, uh, uh, well, it happens at that age, but it happens more as they get older, they become the victim. It's, it wasn't my fault. I, I had to do this. Such and such made me do it. Um, you know, I had to work back because of this person. Uh, I couldn't get home in time. My curfew might be 10 o'clock, but I'm home at 11 because I wasn't driving the car. There's always an excuse. So they become a victim and they start to really give themselves some self-pity. So they're, they're oh, poor them. Oh, poor me. My life is so hard and all these things happen to me. Life happens to me and it's terrible. And uh, what we want our children to be able to do is to, to flip that around, to make meaningful choices. If the driver can't get you home by your curfew, Find someone else who can, you know, or call, you've got the option to call a parent and ask them to come and get you if you get stuck in a situation like that when they're older. Um, with the younger kids, you know, when, when the blocks fall over, we're going to talk about this in a minute, it's going to be the example all the way through. They need to make that choice of like, oh, that was unfortunate. How can I improve that for next time? So starting to accept that there's consequences and they do have some responsibility and everything. And those, the choices that they make, good or bad, are their choices to make. So, uh, you know, they, they make that choice of saying, I couldn't get home because the driver wasn't driving yet. Well, I'm going to be late and I have to accept my, my punishment or consequences of being late for curfew. Or I find another way to do it. And, and then they, they take on the responsibility of that choice as well. Okay, so uh, the problem, so what happens when they're blaming and they're shifting blame to other things is it leads to uh, missing out on important life skills like cause and effect. So if they're, uh, you know, they're not learning that if I do this thing, this is the consequence. If I blame Johnny for knocking my blocks over every single time or him for everything that's happening to me, then... I'm not learning to have any responsibility in that. I'm not learning that maybe that, that means I won't have as many friends. I'm not learning that um, to build strong, healthy relationships with other people. Uh, and that's going to affect them further down the track. It also encourages passiv passivity. So instead of looking for solutions, they're accepting their own excuses. So they become quite passive in it. Oh, it's, it's, it's the car's fault. It's the person driving's fault. It's the person who knocked the blocks over's fault. It's your fault because you won't let me go see the movie I want to go see. They become very passive and they start accepting their own excuses as truth rather than looking for an, a way that they can be more responsible or understanding and take a different action. Uh, it discourages ownership of the problem rather than empowering them to own it. So uh, when Johnny kicks over their blocks rather than them owning the fact that they didn't build the blocks in a manner that was uh, more stable, they will, um, they will pass that off to it's Johnny's fault. He knocked the blocks over because he walked too close instead of saying, okay, I could have built that in a different way and it would have been stronger. So even if Johnny did walk past, it's unlikely to have fallen over. 
Uh, and then what also happens is they start to increase pride and decrease humility, which all sounds great because we all want our kids to be proud of themselves, but we want them to be proud of the right things. So when they're shifting the blame to other people and other things, then uh, we don't want them to have almost a false sense of pride and to be proud of the fact that they're not taking responsibility because what happens on the opposite end is it, it decreases their humility. So, uh, you know, they never actually feel empathy for other people or um, they don't understand, they can't put themselves in someone else's shoes to feel what it is. Like, what does it feel like to be Johnny when you're being blamed for something because you walked past? Well, that really hurts my feelings. Or what happens when I'm tell it, yelling at my mother that I hate them because they won't let me do something? You know, how does that feel for that person? They're not getting that humility of learning those feelings and having that empathy so that when they do do the right things, when they're not blaming someone, they are taking responsibility, they can have pride around that. Um, so it's really important that we teach them the empathy side and admitting that, you know, when they do something wrong, it's okay, you're still learning something, but we need to accept and acknowledge that. Okay, so what about me? So I always bring this back to us. We are the adults, we're the teachers, we're the parents, we're the grandparents. Uh, we need to make sure that we're reflecting on our own actions. You know, did you blame someone for cutting you off? Uh, you know, you're driving down the road and someone's pulled in front of you. And maybe they've just pulled in front of you. But are you screaming and yelling and ranting that they've cut you off in front of the kids? Or, um, you know, maybe you've got a parking ticket on your window when you get back and are you blaming the parking ticket inspector? Are you blaming the council because they're sending parking inspectors around? You know, at the end of the day, you're responsible for the time that you were parked there. So you've got to be mindful of these sorts of things. We do it um, passively. It's, it's part of that passivity thing. So we'll do it passively and not even recognise we're doing it sometimes. So I would encourage you to look and go, okay, am I doing this without, without even realising I'm doing it in front of the kids? Um, you know, if you're home late, are you home late because you're, you're home late? I needed to finish some work and I'm home late. That's it. Or are you home late because someone gave you extra work and your job's so hard and da-da-da-da-da, all these other excuses for why you're late. Kids are sponges. So we want to be careful that we're not blaming. Um, and if we if we change our blame shifting to we want to move it towards what's happened and make more neutral statements so rather than being about a person or a situation it's more of a neutral station statement so my example here is um, we're moving away from you know my wife was trying on another dress and we got a parking ticket like that's blaming the wife for being late to the car but at the end of the day there's two of you one of you could have gone and moved the car or you could have said to your wife, we've got 10 minutes, so, you know, you need to get moving, otherwise I'm going to have to go move the car without you, whatever the case may be. So um, when we're saying things like my wife or my boss or my husband or, my, or you when you're talking to one of the children did something to cause the problem, that's not really helping the situation. That's not a neutral statement. So we want to move it from that to we got a parking ticket, just a plain statement. That's okay. Or we can move it to a statement with a solution. So uh, we got a parking ticket. Next time we need to leave five extra minutes early so that we can get back to the car on time. Okay, so it's not blaming anyone. It's coming up with a solution. It's making the statement. We've got a parking ticket. Okay, what are we going to do better next time? We're going to leave five minutes earlier to get back to the car in time. All right, so here we go. Quick tips, four tips. Let's go. Um, now, what does your child respond to? So first thing you need to do is recognise your child. Each one is different. Each one will respond differently. The three main things that most mammals do, uh, let alone children, is fight, flight or freeze. So all mammals respond in a different way when they're faced with danger. And when your child does something uh, that upsets them or frustrates them, then it feels like danger to them. It becomes very distressing. So we need to identify which one your child does and then you can work with that personality towards personal responsibility. So when you see a fight child, um, most, of, most of them, especially the young ones, they're going to be a fight child <laughs> a lot of the time. Uh, they become quite distressed. So when those blocks fall down, they become distressed. They're angry, uh, they're frustrated, uh, and they might lash out verbally or physically. So they might go kick something else or someone else 
uh, you know, they're verbally blaming somebody else for doing it or, you know, the wind or whatever the case may be and they get quite physical and, and cranky about it. A flight child is going to be the opposite of that. They're the, they're the more introverted ones. They're going to run off. They still don't want to disappoint you, but they're very upset. It's very distressing. They'll run off to another room. They'll cry. Um, you'll see them sulking for a long time afterwards. They might be really whingy. It's not fair. It, it shouldn't have happened. I've done it. So it's a different response. That's more of a flight. And then you get the freeze ones. So the kids that just stand there and like go stationary, like a little uh, frozen ice blocks. They, <laughs> they just stand and their eyes get really big and they start pointing. Usually they'll point to someone else. If they're blaming, uh, they'll be pointing at somebody else who did it. Uh, or, or what could happen is they stay quiet and they don't really answer anything and then later on they'll start blaming somebody or something else. Okay, so you've got to recognise which one your child is. And, and if it's a fight child, you may not be able to do these strategies immediately. You might need to give them some space, ask them to calm down and have a think about it and then you come back in with these strategies after. The flight and freeze child, they can normally do this straight away, but the fight child, they'll, they'll sometimes need to take a few breaths and, and calm down. You'll have to go through that with them first. All right, so we wanna set our expectations. So the most important thing, just like it's important for us to reflect on our actions and what we're doing and whether that's helping or hindering, we also need to do that anytime we're dealing with our kids and we're trying to, um, help them into more of a growth phase or at any point really we need to make sure that we are the adult and we stay in control so we need to stay calm we don't raise our voice we have to stay calm the voice needs to stay controlled um, you want to focus on what's happened so you're not blaming oh it was your fault that the you know stop blaming johnny it's your fault that they fell down we're not doing that either we're staying focused on the blocks have fallen down and you're upset Okay, so we don't worry about any other people or anything else. We're staying focused on what's happened and we're showing empathy while acknowledging their responsibility for what's happened. So the blocks are falling down. We're not saying don't blame Johnny because, you know, how you built them is why they felt down, it's, which is saying it's your fault. We're going to look at the empathy side first because at the end of the day, they're frustrated, they're stressed out, they're worried. So the first thing we need to do is acknowledge that. Okay, I know you're upset that your blocks have fallen down. Or you must feel really sad that you spent so much time and the blocks fell down. Not blaming anybody, just acknowledging what's happened. Uh, and, and it's kind of bringing it back to their responsibility rather than we're not blaming anybody else. We're just saying we must feel really upset that your blocks have fallen down. So it's uh, acknowledging the responsibility of what's happened there. And giving love and being consistent. So, I mean, we do everything with love and this is the, you wouldn't be here if you weren't willing to give love. The, the parents that aren't interested in helping their child and aren't giving them love in that sort of way aren't going to be here listening to me right now. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't really need to put the give love in there because I, I, it's a given for anybody that's already listening to this. Um, being consistent. So this is a huge one and we'll talk about this a lot throughout any kind of um, behavioural things that I'm talking about or um, mostly behavioural things. You need to be consistent with the kids. You can't say, okay, I'm going to be statement and empathy based one day and then the next day you're blaming them. Or you can't say, okay, I'm going to acknowledge what's happened here and we're going to look for a solution and then five minutes later, you're blaming somebody else for something. So we really need to make sure that we're consistent, not just in our own actions and language, but also in how we're getting the children to deal with it. All right, so number one, stay calm. Okay, as much as your child believes and reacts like this is an emergency, it is not an emergency. You know, unless someone's chopped a finger off and we have to go to the hospital, in which case they aren't going to be blaming people, hopefully. They're going to be worried about that finger being chopped off. It's not an emergency. So you need to, and even if they've chopped their finger off, you still need to be calm. Calm tone, calm voice, calm response. And that settles your child faster. It helps them to see that you're not going to be upset with them for making a mistake and that you are going to help them see a bigger picture. So we're not attacking back. There's no, never it's your fault or you did it or any of those sorts of things. It's not going to help them to move forward. Acknowledging what has happened 
and being clear and calm is the most important thing. So the example here, um, you know, and I'm using that blocks, the blocks as example. I know you feel upset and disappointed right now, but you cannot yell at your brother. So if they're upset that their blocks have been kicked over or whatever the case may be, and they're blaming little Johnny and it's his fault that he walked past and it knocked my blocks over, we're not saying that it's, it's child one's fault, but we are acknowledging they're upset, they feel disappointed, their blocks have fallen over. But at the same time, you can't yell at your brother. Okay, it's not acceptable to yell at your brother. Uh, now, what can sometimes happen with this is then the kids get in a little fight and you become, you almost, you have a choice, you almost could become the referee. So he did it, he did this, he did this, no, but she did that, and da 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 We've all seen it. Uh, so you want to, I separate the kids, it's always a separation. I always take each person's story and then we come together with, here was my responsibility in this and here's what I need to do to move forward. And then the other child as well. Well, you know what? I didn't do anything except I walked past. But then you started to talk about everything afterwards. So next time something like this happens and, and you start getting blamed for it, what can you do to improve the situation? So even the child that maybe hasn't necessarily been involved in it, they could still respond differently. So I would still work with them on that. Okay, showing empathy. So understanding their emotions, why are they upset? And then acknowledging what they did without saying it's someone's fault. So step one was staying calm. We're talking about their feelings. I know you feel upset and disappointed right now and we're setting expectations, but you cannot talk about, you cannot yell at your brother. And then we're going to show empathy. So we sort of did back there as well. So, oh no, after all that effort you put in, it's fallen down. So still not blaming anybody. It's acknowledging now that he's, he or she has put in a lot of effort and it's fallen down. So showing empathy. Number three is responsibility and repair. So this is where the change happens. This is where you're building out that personal responsibility for them and showing them how to fix the situation, to repair it or to find a solution. So you want to help the child see their own feelings and uh, their part in what happened. And then you're going to model it back uh, using those feelings and responsibility from the other side as well. So uh, it could be child and person one. It might be Johnny or it might be you, depending on what's happening or how old the kids are. So you want them to go. I would ask them, you know, how are you feeling right now? I feel angry. Okay, why are you feeling angry? I always try and move past angry. Why are you feeling angry? Because I'm frustrated that the blocks fell down. Okay, so give me that in a sentence. I feel frustrated that my blocks fell down. And again, if you've got a fight child, this isn't going to happen straight away. You may need to come back in five or ten minutes once they've calmed down. I feel frustrated that my blocks fell down. Okay, and so then you get the other person. So if it's Johnny, you'll have Johnny there in this conversation. What's happened? The blocks fell down. Not he did, she did, he said, she said. What happened? The blocks fell down. Okay, tell me, child one, how you're feeling? Angry? Why do you feel angry? Because I'm annoyed that the blocks fell down or I'm frustrated. Okay, so make that a sentence for me. I feel frustrated that my blocks fell down. And then we go back to Johnny or the other person and he needs to then accept his responsibility without necessarily saying it's his fault either. So, you know, he could say, I know I shouldn't have walked so close to them while you were building. Or I know next time I'll stay out of the room while you're building blocks, you know, or even if he really didn't do anything wrong, he might just say, I know, I, I know what it's like. It's really upsets me when my blocks fall down too. So you can do it those ways. And then especially at the start, uh, as I was saying, some children are going to need some space and you're going to need to circle back around later. And uh, they need to understand that there's consequences of their actions. So when they're blaming other people and all those sorts of things, they, they still need to understand that that's not acceptable. So uh, blaming, yelling at Johnny or kicking someone or kicking something is not going to be okay. So we do need to broach that as well if they've done that. So uh, you could say you could start that conversation once they've calmed down. I know you're showing the empathy. You're going to make a statement about what they've done and then we're going to look at a solution to move forward with. I know you're upset when the blocks fell down, but kicking and yelling at your brother really hurt his feelings. So explaining to him 
what that what effect has that action had on somebody else um, what can you do to help him feel better or what could you do next time you know normally if there's a person involved we look at an action to solve that problem because it's not fair that Johnny was kicked or hit and we want that problem solved and vice versa, if Johnny's then has gone into attack mode as well and attacked back, then he needs to reciprocate. It needs to go both ways. So um, we're going to acknowledge that we understand how they feel. We're going to discuss what happened. And then we're going to ask them for a solution. So I know that you're upset that your blocks fell down, but kicking and yelling at your brother really hurt his feelings or is not acceptable. Uh, what can you do to help him? It, it, I would even potentially say both, depending on how bad it got. What can you do to help him feel better? Okay. And then once we've gone through that, what are we going to do next time so this doesn't happen is the other thing I would do. All right. So another thing we can do is have a no blame household or classroom. So just a blanket rule that it's a no blame household classroom and we can play a game with this. So, um, you know, in a, in a no blame household, house or classroom, then where we, don't accept blaming other people or events and it becomes a bit of a game because you challenge the kids then to see if they can hear it and spot it. So we're going to encourage the children to express their feelings and their part in what happened. Same with us as adults. If we do it, they should be, we should then reframe what we've said and express our feelings and our part in it as well. And because we're looking for a solution oriented uh, house or classroom, then we're going to also develop um, some responsibility around their part and that it's okay we all make mistakes and there's no right or wrong there's no bad in this there is learning as long as we take responsibility for our own actions so uh, we will look at expressing our feelings what our part is in it and what the solution is going to be so um, an example might be I have given a couple of examples already but I have to think of something that's um, what's, what's a recent problem that was someone else's fault? And this is, uh, I'm going to talk about this later on, but personal responsibility, it's endless. It'll go on and on and on. If they're not blame shifting, there'll be, uh, there'll still be other opportunities for them to take personal responsibility. So, uh, let's say, uh, we're home late from, you know what? Yeah, I've got one. Okay. It's not fair that all my friends get to go and see M-rated movies and I'm not allowed to. I hate you. I hate that you don't let me go and see M-rated movies. Okay, so we're gonna look at the feeling and then their part in that argument. Well, it doesn't normally, it's not that calm usually. <laughs> uh, and then look for a solution. Okay, so uh, what's, you know, once they've calmed down, what are your feelings around this? Oh, I'm, I feel really frustrated and annoyed and um, it's embarrassing that I'm not allowed to go to these movies, but everybody else is. Okay. So what was your part in what just happened? I shouldn't have said that I hate you. That's not true. I'm really sorry I did that. I understand that I'm not old enough to see these movies and, and you want me to wait until I'm a little bit older. Okay. So what are we going to do to stop this sort of thing next time? Next time I'm going to think before, this is normally older kids that are getting to this point. So next time I'm going to stop before I say anything and think about your feelings. And you'll be surprised if you work with kids through this for years and years, they start to actually be aware that they need to think of other people's feelings. And that's what we want. So they will say to you next time I'll, I'll stop and I'll think about your feelings before I say something like that. And, um, and I understand that you'll have reasons why you don't want me to watch that movie. And um, next time I'll ask you what those reasons are rather than yelling at you about it. Okay. So uh, there's always a way around it and we don't blame, but we need to still look at feelings first. So they feel understood. Every human on earth, no matter how old you are, the biggest thing is to, to be understood. So we want to show the kids that we understand where they're coming from and then we want to, and that we're listening and then we want to build around what's happened and what the problem was and then a solution to that, what we're going to do next time. So one thing we can do is make it a game 
And so it can be a game in the whole family or the whole classroom. And each time someone blames something else, um, we can ask the question, okay, what can we do to solve this? What can I do to solve this? What can you do to solve this? So just having that one question asked, it's not blaming them. It's not saying, hey, you blame someone or anything. It's just changing the entire situation around. So rather than being a victim, you're going to say to them, what can you do to solve this? What can I do to solve this? What can we do to solve this? And that'll, that changes how they're thinking. So rather than thinking in that victim mentality of poor me, they start to move out to, oh, well, hang on. I have to answer that question. What can I do to solve this? And it changes the way they think. And the more you do it, the more consistent you are with this, the easier it gets and uh, the less you have to do it. They'll naturally start doing it. Okay, summarise. We want to stay calm and in control. We want to acknowledge their feelings and work towards them stating how they feel and why without blaming anything. So we're holding them accountable for their own actions. And that includes when there's multiple siblings or multiple kids in the classroom. Each child has taken a set of actions and each child needs to be able to verbally take their responsibility in that set of actions. Even if they didn't start it, even if it wasn't their fault, if they continue that path and they escalate it, they need to be held responsible for those, for those actions. But equally, if, they, if it happens and they don't take part in it, perhaps they walk away or they go and tell an adult or, um, or they just stop them in their tracks and say, what are you going to do to solve this? They also need to be acknowledged for their actions because they positive or negative. Those actions would be positive actions that are helping solve a problem. So we would still acknowledge that that's happened. Um, so state what's happened. You know, don't be the referee. You need equal. You need to be equal sides, equal stories from all of the kids. And then here's the statement. Here's our solution. Or here's what I did right. Here's what I could do better. Whatever the case may be. Um, if a child isn't ready to hear you, so the fight children, we want to wait until the child is calm. I don't let them do whatever they want. I would normally move them to a separate area and tell them, you need to take five minutes to calm down and think about your actions. That's it. I'm not blaming you, but I'm telling you, you need to take five minutes to think about your actions. And I move them to a separate place. Then not to continue with whatever the activity was that caused the, the problem to start with. And then we go back and we make the statement about our feelings. We, we make a statement around what's happened without blaming anybody, just what has happened. And then we can finish with a solution-based question on how we can fix it or improve it for next time. So an example might be, I know that you're frustrated and you can't see the same movie your friends are going to. Saying you hate me and you wish I was dead really hurt my feelings. So obviously I wouldn't be saying it necessarily in this tone. <laughs> <laughs> how can we handle this handled how can we handle this better when it happens next time because it is going to happen next time those teenage you know the preteens and those teenage kids they're going to go for it as many times as they can if they know it upsets you but hopefully as you discuss it it happens less frequently so uh so <clears throat> you look look um jenny I know, I know, I know you're frustrated. You can't see the same friend, same movies that your friends are going to. All their parents let them and, uh, uh, and I've said that you can't go. I understand that frustrates you. Uh, but saying that you hate me or you wish I was dead, that's really hurting my feelings and it's not acceptable. And normally they'll apologise or they'll say sorry or they'll just sit there sulking or whatever the case may be. So moving forward... What, what can we do? What could you do next time that's going to improve this? And then I stay silent and just wait. Sometimes they might take five minutes to think of an answer. That's okay. Don't let them off the hook though. And if it does take a little while and they're still looking at you, you can prompt them. Okay, well, I'm waiting for an answer. What's, what's going to change for next time? Because that, that was not okay to speak to me that way. All right. So that's it from me. If you've got any questions, um, let me see if I can find my face again. There it is. Uh, if you've got any questions or you need any help or you're having blame game, blame shifting happening at home and you want to comment, by all means do that. You can do it privately or in the Facebook group or on email. And uh, I'm here to help and to give you specific solutions for yourself. And if you can hear that truck backing down the driveway, 
three rooms away from me. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good week. And uh, I'm going to do some tips on, um, on taking personal responsibility, how to, how to help kids become more personally responsible so these sorts of escalation issues and blaming and things don't happen. So that'll be coming up soon too. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Bye.